Good morning. Today I want to talk about these crappy aluminum valve stems on tire pressure monitoring systems and what you could do about it to prevent that from happening but not use the same stuff. So you have for number one you have to use a plastic cap. If you don't know that you're gonna find out the hard way. Especially if you live in an environment where there's salt and winter and things like where I have. Because you get corrosion underneath between the two metals and the fuses on. You go to take the cap off. Sometimes people put a pair of pliers and this whole end snaps off. You lose all the air in your tire in a heartbeat. Now, what can we do about this? Now, you may have seen these kind of sensors where it has a rubber valve stem. This stem will last. The rubber valve stems have been around forever. They basically essentially can last the life of a vehicle. So I want to use this stem on this sensor and I found a way to do it so I want to show you how. Alright this is so easy you're gonna love this. So here we have the factory way it looks with the aluminum and you'll notice it has kind of a ball fitting here. That's so once it's in the wheel you can adjust the sensor swing to, the, to in or out to the wheel so it's not sticking out and then you know easier to bust it off and when you're mounting a tire or dismounting a tire. So that has a ball fitting on it like this at the bottom. And we're going to need that, something like that. And I originally was going to cut this off and use it. Now, at the end of this video, this current one I'm showing you, yesterday I came up with this idea and I used this kind of sensor. And it had, uh, this might have been the factory Chrysler sensor for my Jeep. And it had a different kind of valve stem that went through, kind of has a T on the end. And what I did was I cut off the T like kind of how I did this. And the T passes through like it normally does. And the rubber valve stem would go through and then screw down. Uh, yesterday I didn't have this camera with me in the tripod so it, I used my cell phone. It's shaky. It's a little bit of a crappy video. But if you want to watch it after this one go ahead. If not just say bye bye. So. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to cut this off like I did yesterday. I found an even easier way today. So what we got here is our supplies. Let's get that one out of here. We're going to use our sensor, the kind I told you about, same as this one. See that round hole in there where that did a ball shape? We're going to recreate that so we can have that swing because we're going to need one of these rubber valve stems from a different kind of sensor. Now these are cheap. I think I just ordered a set from eBay and I think I got 20 for $15, right? And they're rubber valve stem, like 100% like the other ones, only they don't have kind of the rounded bottom your normal everyday one has. That's why we're going to use this. We're going to use the bottom of that sensor to act as this round swivel ball for this socket. So you could see basically that an everyday valve stem has that ability to pivot in a joint. So what I did was I took simply a valve stem, put it in the vise, took a sharp razor blade, keeping my fingers back, at least this finger, in the vise, let's say this hand is the vise, and I took the, this hand, I took a razor blade and I passed it as straight as I could down until I cut this piece off. It's really easy, just, you know, don't cut yourself. That's obvious. So now we have our ball fitting, and then we have this, you see? So, most of your sensors come, they'll give you a new screw. It might be a good idea to put some Loctite on it so it doesn't come loose inside the tire and fall in. And then your sensor's roaming around in there, beating it up. So, basically now, let's pretend this is in the wheel now. And we're going to put it in. I'm going to waste one just so I can show you. So, we got it in the wheel. We're going to pass, this bottom will be showing on the underside of the of the, the wheel just like it normally does. Then we're going to put this on and then we're going to put our sensor on and then we're going to take our screw okay and you can see it doesn't stick out a great deal. The other thing we're going to need is you can see the size of the hole the screw head is going to pass right through there so I have somewhere I think I did there it is a very small washer but it won't pass through that hole in the sensor. So, let's see if I can get this on here and show you. So, we're going to take this Torx driver 
I'm going to try to do this you know without having a wheel mounted and I'm going to try to put the screw put this together so you could see what it would look like mounted and like I said it would be easier if I put it in the rim but I want to do it this way first just to show you okay so you can see we can adjust our swing now with that ball okay and then tighten it up and you're done so what it cost us cheap valve stem and the kind that uses the kind that a uh, tire pressure sensor uses two two rubber valve stems that's the cost of this yeah I, mean, I know like you may not have a tire machine to bust the bead up and stuff but if you have a, your tire installer you could get these parts get them ready for them like this and say here here's what I want you to do I don't want this piece of garbage in there that's, that's just trouble down the road anymore and you still have the same sensor oh and by the way I should show you this if you're worried about the air getting in you know that I'm gonna show you give me a second and I'll get an air hose alright I'm back and we've got our air fitting of course it leaks and we've got our new valve set up. And the air's blown right out. There. Now, so that'll fill the tire. And then, typically there's a small hole on sensors where the air pressure goes in. I think it's that. There's that might be a couple of them. I could see another one here. That might, maybe there's an exit hole too to let the air back out. So, any case the air will get fill the tire and then the sensor will measure the pressure and work its function so um, I'm gonna put it in the tire now just to show you okay I'm gonna try to make this as visible as possible so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our sensor that I just put together and I meant to say we're gonna put it into the wheel not the tire before so I'm going to take the sensor back apart, take the screw out. And now I have the sensor, as I said before, um, just itself. So you need some kind of lubricant when you pull these things through. I'm using a, a tire paste that's made for mounting tires. It's actually nice because it doesn't turn to crap like that uh, liquids do. And it won't. I think it's made out of animal fat that's got perfumes in it in case um, what I was told the perfumes are you know for businesses that have uh, watched animals go in at night so they don't eat it because they'll actually eat it because it's uh, animal fat okay that boring fact is out of the way for you so I'm gonna put it up from underneath and I got a tire mounting uh, puller or tire valve puller I'll put that on And then, this is just a steel rim, it needs a paint job and everything, so if you had a nice rim, you'd put something between it, you know, to, to take the, uh, so you don't scratch and mar up your rim or whatever. So, I'm going to take it away so I can see easier. So I'm going to pull that up in there, gently, and there it is. It's mounted, okay. So we have our valve stem mounted. Now we have to get you to see the mounting of the sensor. So I have to reposition the camera for you for a second. Hold on. Alright, so you can see the sensor sticking through, and it has uh, it has the brass piece looking out at me. And I'm going to try to block this wheel so it doesn't roll around while I'm doing it. Okay, so real simple now. We got a couple things we need to do. We need to put our disc on that we made from our piece of uh, valve stem. Now this is the tricky part. Now these screws are a certain length. You might, I don't know what thread they are, if they're metric, if they're American, what, you know, you could probably find screws that are longer and tailored as custom, but um, 
the other thing I should explain is how the air gets in the tire after you put the screw in. Well, there's a hole in the side of the brass piece, and that's the air squirts in there. And as long as this is bigger and it doesn't squash over the hole, the air is going to get in there after we mount it. So then we have our sensor. Okay, and like I said, we, we want the ball there because we want to have the angle we want. You don't want it to just pull up any old angle after you tighten it up. You want the angle that's needed to keep it as far away from the tire contact when you're mounting, dismounting as possible. Now, here's the tricky part, okay? You have to get the screw, whoops, see? And there, of course, I dropped it and lost it. Okay, I'm back. I dropped the screw, so I just did a pretty cool trick. I should have uh, shared this with you. But have you ever done this one? It's an old-timer's trick. Take a coil of electrical wire, and you strike it on a 12-volt battery. Just strike it. Don't connect it, because it will get hot enough to cook through and burn you. Just put one end, strike the other, and it makes a magnetic field. It makes your screwdriver magnetic for quite a long time. And you can see... Let's see, I'll show you that it picks up the screw now, see? So that lessens my chance of dropping it. So now the thing I want to do is I'm going to have to get this. This is the hard part. Now, um, if you push on the stem, it actually sticks out further. And if you get that to catch, like I said, if you can find a longer screw, you're set. Okay, this is the tricky part. I don't have a longer screw but I did get it outside. I feel it. And one of the problems with it, with doing this, is that if you catch it wrong, you could strip the valve stem out and be out of $2. So, the other thing you could do is you could cut this even thinner. And I may just do that and come back. Okay, rather than cut my fingers up with uh, by trying to hold uh, the cup, this cup, and make a smaller one, I decided to just waste another ordinary valve stem. So now we'll try this one on. Okay, try the same thing again. And this is why I'm showing you this because you know it's not a perfect science here. You may have to tinker around, find your own way. Perfecto. That was the way to, to go. Just I had to make it a little thinner and tighten it right up. Again, if I was going to leave this here, I'll probably put some uh, Loctite on the, on the threads like I did yesterday. So now we're all mounted up. It's nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. And we're going to give it the air test. Make sure the air goes in. Measure the measure the tire pressure like it should. And you got a rubber valve stem that'll last. Put a rubber cap on it. You can see how it looks inside there. Perfect. So if you like this idea uh, and you want to take a look at the, the clips I'm going to just throw on here after this, great. If you don't, thanks for watching. I'm not going to perform the operation because it's it's just very easy. There's no reason for me to, but I'll explain it. So what I did was. You know, if you have the old system, you have all this stuff, all this, these stupid seals, all this garbage here. And like I said, it all corrodes and leaks and all that. So what I did to make this stem work is take the, this valve stem, cut it off to the length, the length of this brass colored stem right here. So in other words, from the bottom of here, measure up, cut it off. You'll end up with a chunk about this big okay right here what that does is instead of just using the very bottom of it it gives it stability going through the sensor and it tightens right up against against the uh, 
the valve stem once it's in the in the in the wheel. Okay, something something like that. It doesn't want to stay without being fastened. Now, it does. You, what now? The other thing I had to do is you see the hole in there. I had to drill that hole out bigger. This hole was not big enough to go over, say like that, but obviously the, this way. But you get the, the sense is that it doesn't pass through. So I did have to drill it up. First I drilled it, um, after you cut it in half, you're gonna find that it steps down inside to a smaller hole. You can probably just see that. So I drilled first the outer, the exact size of the outer hole once you're looking at first, and went through this, the short piece that was all the same. Then one extra drill bit bigger, um, this size right here, whatever that is, you figure it out, you might have different valve stems. And then, what happens is this will pass I'm going to put it in from the outside just so you can see it will pass into it now okay so when you put the valve stem in and what we have to do is you have to put the valve stem in the wheel first so you can get that stretch and pull it through like any other valve stem and then bolt the sensor back to the valve stem so I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back to the tire when I'm done Okay, the valve stem's in. Like I said, I pulled the stem in first, then I screwed on the bottom piece. Now, uh, it is a little fiddly to try to do this with the tire still on. You know, you can see I have a block wood holding my bead down. It is a pain in the butt. And of course, if you drop the screw, it's going into the tire and you'll be dismounting it anyway. And I know one of the first comments I'll read from a smart ass is, Step one, buy a $6,000 tire machine. Well, that's not really the point of this. The point is that your, your original valve stems are garbage. They're nothing but trouble. I've seen people try to take the core out and then snap off the uh, out the whole thing just because the core seizes inside. You don't need that like when you have a problem. So the rubber is trusty and uh, foolproof, and there it is. So I might actually dismount the other three I have to do because it is it is a pain in the butt but just for, it can be done. And does the air get into the wheel? It ends up just traveling around through this piece. And this is on there nice and tight too, by the way. See, you can see that it's actually moving the upper part of the stem. So that's it, I'm gonna fill it up and then we're just gonna do a test on the sensor to show that it still works. Okay, like I said, we're gonna test this and um, like I said, you don't have if you don't have a tire machine or access to a way to break the bead, you can make these up and give them to your installer and say, here, put these on. I don't want those those troublemakers on anymore. So, um, I just bought this thing because uh, you know it's something you kind of need nowadays if you're a DIY person. Um, I saw another. I try to find the best price on everything, and of course, it has to be able to work very well too. But found a guy um, something I forget what he calls himself a uh, flat rate mechanic or something on YouTube and he explained this thing and I, it, I got this for just over 100 bucks on eBay brand new anyway uh, so we'll turn it on and uh, I had forgotten too that you know I, I should have known better because when I used to work for BMW uh, they had all those stupid metal valve stems and their spares were checked but the spare is checked on this vehicle as well and if I had an issue where I couldn't figure out you know what was going on and I forgot about the spare so that I hadn't checked the air pressure in that in ages anyway going on to the Jeep Wrangler which I've already it's already in memory it's gonna ask me if I want to clear the data go ahead and do so now it's going to left front so we'll assume this is left front and I'm just gonna hit the scan button and there it is so it's found the sensor and it's ready to go okay that's it so again this is a good uh, foolproof way to get rid of the the corrosion the leaks and uh, you know I mean just periodically you'll go out if you live in a, a climate like I do where you know it snows and there's salt on the roads and all that even these plastic valve stems will seize on there and you can go to try to take it off those aluminum stems and the end snaps off now you got a flat right where you are so uh, that's it thanks for watching this one and uh, by the way 
I forgot to tell you that, let me show you here. The stem I made up, I neglected to tell you when I did it, that after you drill out the, the holes larger, the screw that used to go through uh, this guy here and hold it to that valve stem, it'll pass right through the hole. At least in my case it does. The screws that were in there didn't have much of a head on it. So what I had to do is just get some very small flat washers. I just used one per sensor, put it on the, on the screw head, and then it keeps it from passing clean through, and otherwise it won't, the sensor will fall off from the wheel. Okay, thank you for watching.